Sally Greenberg, and I'm Executive Director of the National Consumers League. And I am joined today by our, one of my uh, favorite colleagues, Susan Winkler. Susan is CEO of the Reagan Udall Foundation of the FDA. And we've invited Susan to speak to you about the role that pharmacists play at the FDA. So Susan, we are really thrilled to be able to connect with you to learn more about the Reagan Udall Foundation and to share your story with participants in our Scripture Future Team Challenge. The Scripture Future Team Challenge is a two month contest where pharmacy students from all across the country compete to conduct health education and outreach in their communities. We're hoping that after today's talk, they will be inspired uh, to look at career opportunities at the FDA and to just have a better understanding of the role that pharmacists uh, have with the FDA and vice versa. So I'm gonna start things off by asking you if you can tell us a little bit about the Reagan Udall Foundation. And I should add that I have served on the board of the Reagan Udall Foundation as a consumer representative for nearly a decade. So Susan, the floor is yours. Well, Sally, first, thank you so much for serving on our board. Um, you've been such uh, a great advisor in helping us to, to do what we need to do. So, so let's talk about that. The Reagan Udall Foundation for the FDA is fairly unique in that we were created by Congress with one purpose, and that is to help the FDA do more to protect and promote the public health. So our team spends every day thinking about how to support the agency and its staff. We help keep help FDA keep pace with advancements in regulatory science. We help them connect with external stakeholders and to improve consumer understanding of FDA regulated products. And, and Sally, thank you for helping us do that great work. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been really an honor to serve on the board, and it has a wonderful uh, group of board members who are very dedicated to the work of the FDA. And I can't think of a, a two year period in the FDA's history which has been more intense than the last uh, COVID pandemic focused year. And the work of the agency, I think, has really been so critically important in the lives of Americans. And I think many, many millions of Americans so appreciate what the agency does now in, the, in, the, uh, in this whole context of COVID. And hopefully we've gotten uh, over uh, the worst of the, the Omicron variant and are on our way to, uh, to better health across the country. But uh, the, the, this discussion is really focused on students, uh, pharmacy students. And the pharmacy students that we work with um, may not know that you have a degree in pharmacy and that prior to coming to the Reagan Udall Foundation, you were chief of staff at the FDA. Uh, can you tell us a little about yourself and how you came to the FDA. And I should add, you also have a, uh, a law degree from Georgetown University. I, I do. And, and when I thought about this question, Sally, um, I have to acknowledge I took a bit of a circuitous route. You know, when I was sitting in pharmacy school at the University of Iowa, I didn't imagine that I would end up at the FDA or at the Reagan Udall Foundation for the FDA largely because it didn't exist at that time. <laughs> um, but I also didn't imagine that I'd be living in the Washington, D.C. area now for um, quite a few years. But it's, um, you know, one of those situations where I truly enjoyed my pharmacy education, um, but quickly pivoted from the more clinical and direct patient care roles to some that were more policy oriented or um, administrative and, and representing the profession. So I spent, I came out to, to Washington, D.C. to do a residency at the American Pharmacists Association, um, spent almost 15 years there. And, and in that role, I interacted with FDA quite a lot. And so then the agency recruited me to help the FDA better engage with external stakeholders to improve their policy development. And then I was at the right place at the right time and had the extraordinary opportunity to serve as the agency's chief of staff. Uh, so I didn't plan it, <laughs> um, but it's, I, I, I truly am incredibly fortunate. And I'm not sure now that I'll ever get back to my parents' um, small cosmetic business in Iowa. I think I'll, I'll be here in DC and continuing the, the policy career here. 
Well, it seems like uh, there are amazing opportunities for pharmacists to serve at the FDA. Uh, can you tell us a little about the variety of roles that are available to pharmacists within the different offices at the FDA? I Yes. Yeah. So there's pharmacists at the FDA have this extraordinary opportunity where you combine pharmacist training, right, where you have important elements of drug knowledge and critical thinking, as well as some softer translation skills, right, from translating what prescribers um, want to achieve to communicating with patients about their medications. You combine that range of skills with the really vast range of work that FDA does, and you find this great intersection. So FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, for example, manages that influx of new drug applications, but is also continuously monitoring the performance of those drugs in real life and communicating with other parts of the medication use system. So um, the, the pharmacist opportunities at FDA have this this great mix of building from many components of pharmacist training, and then you can apply them in many ways uh, with FDA, you know, fulfilling its, its really significant scope. How many pharmacists uh, uh, are employed at the FDA? Uh, you know, that is a great question. And, and I, I should say there should be more, uh -huh. <laughs> but there are many. So the agency staff has grown quite a bit um, and is now, you know, upwards of, of about 18,000. I don't know the precise number of pharmacists, but I do a little bit of kind of internal calculation when I was at the agency and now from the foundation perspective, when I'm ever, ever I'm in a meeting, at least 50% of the meetings, there's another pharmacist in the room. And so I, I do that. So it, I don't have a precise number for you, Sally, but there are um, quite a few. And each one of them, you know, is, is uh, having a great impact in, in helping us, right, as users of what it is that the agency does. Is there any special training uh, within the uh, uh, field of pharmacy that a pharmacy student might want to seek out if they wanted to have uh, opportunities at the FDA? So it's a great question. Certainly the core therapeutics and ability to critically think about how medications work and, and you know, understand you know, that kind of core being the medication expert, that fits into a common role at the FDA, which might be in reviewing drug applications or being involved in kind of the, the product surveillance that takes place after a medication is, is approved. Uh, so that core therapeutics expertise is important. The softer skills of being able to talk about medications in a way that helps consumers and patients understand how to make the best use of that medication, that, I call it a, an ability to translate, and that yeah. becomes really helpful as the FDA tries to translate the very specific statutory and regulatory and guidance requirements into um, language that then the healthcare system can understand or other uh, even regulated industry can understand. Um, those skills of mm -hmm. translation become mm -hmm. really important. And then candidly, I think pharmacists have to be organized and that ability to be organized and diligent and very um, process oriented is just helpful in any agency where you're moving freight through um, you know, and saying, okay, we've got an application coming in, we need to do this type of work on it, and then we need to move the process through. So it's, it's, there's so many components that are helpful. And then just understanding the pharmacy environment is helpful to the agency to get a better window into the real world use of medications and vaccines. So um, that kind of experience of having been at the intersection of the actual medication and the patient use. It, it, you know, when you're at FDA, you aren't that close to the patient. It's true. And so <laughs> just having that experience is helpful in improving what the agency does. Mm -hmm. 
Um, do you have to live in Washington, D.C. to be a pharmacist trained uh, professional? Are there uh, offices um, of the FDA outside of Washington, D.C.? So there are offices of the FDA now around the world. Um, so you, you could even find yourself um, in, in China or um, in India uh, in doing some other work, although those offices are far smaller than, than in the United States. But the FDA's footprint is nationwide. And so there are opportunities for pharmacists. Um, the positions that are deployed around the United States tend to be more in the kind of the, the um, it's called the Office of Regulatory Affairs or the, um, the field force. Although I'll note that the head of the field force is a pharmacist. And um, so it, it's certainly a place where um, pharmacists have worked and kind of come up through the system. So no, you don't have to be in DC. A number of the positions are here, mm -hmm. but, but by, no, by no means all of them. The, the, so FDA has regional offices all over, the, all over the country. Yeah, and it's really important that we have uh, that, that kind of reach for the agency. Um, how common is it, you may have answered this already, but I'm gonna ask anyway, how common is it for pharmacists to transition from uh, a clinical practice to a career at the FDA? Well, so there are certainly far more pharmacists in clinical practice, right? If we think about the, the full yeah. range of the profession. But if you have an interest in the policy, in the administrative, in the regulatory angle, um, it's worth checking out. But it is, you know, it's, a, it's by no means as big as community pharmacy or hospital pharmacy or even long-term care pharmacy. But it is um, a, a significant opportunity if you like that um, connection more to the drug development space and to the regulatory space. And I just have to say, you know, I'm a huge fan of FDA and I'm a huge fan of the pharmacy profession. So anytime you can link those two, I think it's a great combination. Indeed. Um, so um, let's um, ask you one final question, and that is, uh, what advice will, can you offer pharmacy students as they're finishing up their education? And one thing I think you said, and then I'll let you answer, is it's really good to have some of that uh, behind the counter dealing with uh, uh, customer experience, because that is very much needed at the FDA, those insights and that, that uh, those opportunities uh, are, are valued by, by the agency. Absolutely. And, and I think, you know, the true heroes of the pharmacy profession are those who are directly involved in patient care, really, who are, are helping individual patients understand how to make that best use of that medicine um, and avoid problems, but also optimize what they, they yield from it. Um, and that experience is really helpful in um, roles outside the FDA. Um, the other piece I'd, I'd challenge uh, student pharmacists to think about is that they're really finishing their formal education but they're beginning their commitment to lifelong learning. And if you can start out with that mindset of being intellectually curious, of saying, I'm gonna learn new skills, I'm gonna learn new things, that is so helpful and helps um, you know, each career position, each job move. If you say, what am I taking from this? What am I learning? It makes it so much more exciting. And, and one final thought I will say, Say a lot of student pharmacists as they finish their formal education get really caught up in getting, you know, what's that first job? And I want it to be exactly right. That first job is exactly right if you learn something. And you can be in it for 15 years, you can be in it for five years, you can be in it for two months if you learn and then continue to grow and say, what is it that um, you know, helps me say, I'm, I'm proud of my profession. I'm proud of what I'm doing. And I like what I do when I go to, when I go to work, when I go to the pharmacy. Well, that's wonderful advice for any profession. Um, if, if people, uh, pharmacy students are interested in um, getting more information, who do they reach out to? Is there an office within FDA that, that uh, looks at applications and looks at student background? This is, you know, for now or for in the future. 
Yeah, so one of the opportunities is actually to do a rotation at FDA. Right. And so there's a way to do that in reaching out, and I'm happy to help folks make the connection. And then in looking at positions, it is helpful to think through, you know, what's available, and uh, usajobs.gov is that place to, to look. Okay. Um, but also great, um, I'm happy to help any pharmacy student who is uh, thinking about um, – exploring opportunities at FDA. Well, that's really generous of you. We don't want to make your job even more complicated and harder than it is because uh, we know we know you, how much you have on your plate. I know, certainly uh, at the foundation. But thank you so much, Susan, for uh, your generosity in offering these thoughts and, and strategies for pharmacy students. And I hope we'll have a chance to talk again about uh, there's so many issues related to community pharmacy, independent pharmacy, uh, chain pharmacies and their interactions with patients uh, and how important that is to, to the work that we do. So let's, uh, let's try to do this again at some point if you'll be uh, kind enough to uh, share some of your insights and ideas. And let me just thank you so much, Susan Winkler, the, um, the CEO, Chief Executive of the Reagan Udall Foundation. Thanks so much, Sally.